Uh, we feel like that, that, number one, normally if a young man is going to play in the game, we don't announce it because if we do, then it gives the other team an advantage to know what's hurt or that he's sick and they ought to beat him down. And, and if it's a sore ankle, they'll take shots at the ankle. They're human beings and they want to win a game. There's no question about that. So if a young man's out on Monday, we say he's out. Last week, because it was obvious that Trey Newton did not play in the second half, and it was obvious that uh, Vondrell McGee went down and did not come back in, that we thought we should address it, that they both were not out of the game, but there were issues that we need to look at. When you talk about sickness, you know I'm sick about every day. I got allergies, I got a headache. I mean, where, where are levels of sickness? You, if you can play and you don't feel good, should I say to everybody, boy, Colt doesn't feel good, Oklahoma, so y'all, if y'all don't get after him now, he is miserable. He got a real bad head cold. He can't breathe, so I, I'm just making everybody aware of that. Or do you listen to Colt and you say, hey, let's go to work. Let's do the best you can do. Uh, in fact, if, if he could have talked after the press conference, he probably wouldn't even have mentioned it. And when his thumb got hit, I mean, he said to me, he said, my gosh, Coach, that thing, it hurts. Uh, but no, I'm not coming out. And I need to run the ball more. Let me have the ball in my hands. And I'm thinking, okay, we're sick. We've got a bad thumb, but I'm not coming out and I want to run more. That's too much information. You know, just leave me alone and let me go here and, and do what we need to do. But Colt is so tough. And if you'll watch the emotion of Colt right after the game, number one with that ball in his hands, he's shaking it up above. And he's so excited that he, he's beating Oklahoma again and we're moving forward as a team. And, and then he broke up a little bit uh, with the uh, Lisa Salters after the game. That shows you it's not about him. He's not sitting and wondering how many times did I throw it and how many times did I complete it and what, what did it look like for me. He wanted to win that football game. That was the only thing that matters. And, and when people are looking at Heisman numbers, to me that's a key. It's not always about gaudy numbers. It's about who wins. And that kid is, is five away from the winningest ever, and that's pretty cool. Winning the way you did, kind of an un-Big 12 fashion with the – slugfest, low scoring, is there some satisfaction and is it a point where down the road maybe you could point to, hey, we can win this way as well? Yes, I, I, it's humorous after 12 years here and I kind of grew up in the SEC. If our game had been in the SEC Saturday, they'd have said, what a great tough SEC game. This is the way they win down here. They run the ball and they play defense. Big 12, they say, well, that's sloppy. I can't believe that's sloppy. So, and, and then we get, so we're all spread offense and we're not, uh, uh, we're not tough. It's not a tough league. I thought it was two great defenses on Saturday. I'm going to tell you, there will be so many NFL players on that team and uh, off, off of those two teams that will be playing off the defense next year. Peyton Manning came up after the game. He said, I saw a bunch of them out there I'd like to draft, but they're not going to make it to us. We're 5-0. and uh, And that's true. But I think the, the key to college football, everybody loves the style points. Style points die when you're undefeated at the end. I mean, here we are starting the second run. Uh, at the end of the year, and what you got to do is win, survive, move on. It's hard, not going to look pretty all the time. And I think that's the key to where we are right now. And that's why we've won with kicking game, we've won with defense, we've won with offense. Uh, our differential, if you'll look at the stats John will release today, uh, we've outscored the opponent 164 points. Florida's out, and that's second in the country in amount of how many we've scored compared to how many we've given up. Uh, Florida's 166, so they're two points higher than us. So. Uh, I like the way we're playing, uh, and again, we can fix some things. I, I really like the fact that we were able to run the ball for 189 yards. That's a huge message. Last week we couldn't, and Colorado obviously is getting better. I mean, they, nobody in here would have picked them to beat Kansas. I mean, that's just part of the deal. So uh, if, if we can just stay away from ghosts and not talking about the end and talk about today, talking about the now, I loved our misdirection Saturday. I loved the fact we were able to run it better. Uh, that will help us with play action. Uh, there's some things that we hit on Saturday I think will help us down the road. More or less this week to fix them than last week? Every week they're different. When you start looking at it, John, in my estimation, that's what makes it so hard and so challenging because you never know who's going to show up. Our kids usually play hard. They don't always play good. We've been able to just line up and throw the ball for the last couple of years and just beat everybody. Well, everybody now is trying to press us and they're trying to blitz us. So we've got to be able to run the ball. We, we didn't have the sacks the second half. We had the first half because we tied the blitzes down with the running game. And we had some bigger runs Saturday than we've ever had. If I'd asked you guys if we'd run for 189 yards up, you all would have sniggered last week because you were beating me up so bad about we couldn't run it a lick. 
and they were giving up 53 yards rushing a game. So I thought the coaches did a great job of finding some runs to settle down the team in the second half, and therefore we were able to keep the ball 19-plus minutes. About that stretch last year and, and when you know, Missouri was part of that, but at the same time, that Missouri game had one of the best first halves of football we've <coughs> seen in a long time. This is not the game where you feel things went awry. You know, I mean, do you want to duplicate that success you had last year? At what point did you start to think fatigue set in and all of that? Yes, I thought our first half against Missouri last year was the best half we played for the year. And it, it's a little unrealistic because things aren't going to happen that well all the time. I mean, every time a ball bounced up, we caught it. Uh, Colt dropped a ball, bounced up in his hands, and he threw an 18-yard out. I mean, you know, it just it was one of those nights where it just worked for us. Uh, and it happened to be the week after uh, Oklahoma on national TV, so it, it was good. Then the next week, we didn't play quite as well against Oklahoma State. We had chances to put them away and didn't. And then Tech, is, we've, we've seen it enough and talked about it enough, uh, so that's what the kids and coaches need to learn from is just uh, you don't ever know when Pretty's going to show up. When, when Pretty shows up, hug it, enjoy it, and say, boy, I don't know where these guys came from, but let's just, hey, Greg, repeat successful plays. Just keep doing it, big boy, what you're doing. Same with Will. Uh, but when Ugly shows up, you still got to win too. You got to hug Ugly and, and hang in here and fight. And there were some Ugly that showed up on Saturday, but an experienced staff, a confident staff, hung in there and didn't panic and did what we needed to do to win when not everything was working. And I think that that's the thing that the staff should get so much credit for on Saturday. And the kids at halftime, I told the kids, you were down by uh, one point last year, you're down by three this year. So what's the big deal? Come on now. You got to find a way to win. This is us. We win the fourth quarters. We're going to do it in this game. So let's go out and, and start it that way. And, and that's what the kids did. So I was very proud of them. But you can't expect to have a first half like Missouri last year this, this time. you got to go back to work. Last question. Who wins these two games this week? Uh, Colt said or Georgia? Around the middle of the game. I can answer that. We can't get into yeah. high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good point. I'm not going to ask either one of them. I'm going to stay away from that we one. So I think down somebody down here had one. Was it you, Jeff, or somebody? But number one, they may have the best defensive personnel in the country, or they're in that group. They're unbelievable. Gerald McCoy, unbelievable. I, I looked him up after the game, and I said to him, my gosh, uh, I mean, bless your heart, what a great player you are, son. You you just unbelievable. And the, the their whole front's that way. They're just really good. Linebackers are great. Secondary can cover you. And I think what we found is that we need to run the ball better, uh, and that will help us with play action, get the ball deeper. So, uh the same scheme they used in the first half, they used the second half. We handled it the second half. We didn't handle it the first half. So, uh, And it, it was different than what they'd done with us in the past. They came out all out blitz. Colorado played us different. So there's no question people are going to try to pressure and, and press us. And what we've got to do is make sure we can get the ball downfield further and make sure we do some play action to get some deep balls okay. and run better.